All right, I want to talk about mean absolute deviation. Mean absolute deviation is simply a way of measuring how far away all of your data strays from the mean. So another way of saying this would be, on average, how far away are our numbers from the mean? So let's take a look at these two data examples. Um, this for, both of these data examples have the exact same mean, median, and mode. So the measures of central tendency that we normally use aren't effective in describing the difference between these two sets of data. So we need a, uh, some method, and we're going to that method is going to be the mean absolute deviation of describing how the data relates to the mean in this situation. The mean for both of these is 7.5. The median for both of these data sets is 7.5. And the mode, you have two modes, 7 and 8, <coughs> for both data sets. So for the mean absolute deviation, first we need to use the mean. The mean here is 7.5. And what we're going to do is we're going to list the whole set of data. So we've got 5, 6, 6, 7, 7, 7, 8, 8, 8, 9, 9, 10. And for each number in that data set, we're going to subtract the mean. The reason we're subtracting the mean is because when we subtract, we find the distance away from the mean that each number is. We're finding the difference between the mean and the actual number. And when we subtract the mean from each number, we get positives and negatives. Any numbers that were lower than the mean will render negative numbers. Um, and these numbers that we're getting are called residuals. And a residual is nothing more than the distance away from the mean that a given number is. And um, along with the direction. In this case, the residual for 5 is negative 2.5 because it is to the left 2.5 units from the mean on the number line. So we go through and we list the residuals for each number. And I'm just going to kind of put an arrow here to show that we're subtracting 7.5 from each value. And I want you to notice, if we were to take the average of these numbers, in this instance, we would get 0 because of the symmetrical nature of our dot plot here. Um, we have everything to the right side of the mean is in relation on the other side of the mean the same place. So if we were to just add these all together, it doesn't tell us how spread out the data is because the positives and negatives would just cancel one another out. Okay, We want to know how spread out the data is and how far it deviates from the mean. We have to take the absolute value of these residuals and then add these values together. So now we treat every one of these as a positive. The reason we're doing this is because when we talk about distance from the mean, we don't care which direction it is off of the mean. We just want to know how far. So if it's off to the left or off to the right is unimportant. If it's off, we want to know how far off of the mean it is. So in this case, uh, two point, negative 2.5, absolute value is 2.5. Now we will find the mean of all these values. And the way we find the arithmetic mean 
of course, is you add all the values and then you divide by the number of values you have. So here we have 12 numbers, 2.5, 2.5 is 5, plus 3, 4, 5, so that's 10, plus 1, 4, 7, 17, and we would divide that number 17 by the number of residuals that we took the absolute value of here, and that is 12. It's also the same number of values we have in our data set. So our mean absolute deviation, or MAD, would have equaled 17 twelfths, or 1 and 5 twelfths. So what does this mean? It means for this set of data, on average, our data varied by, and this is approximately just a little less than one and a half, it was somewhere in this range. Right, just a little bit shy of 9, just a little bit shy of 6 in this direction. So our mean absolute deviation says that our data on average only deviated that far. Okay? If we have a larger MAD, that means that the data deviated much further. So for example, let's go ahead and find the mean absolute deviation for this other set of data. So for our second set of data, 3, 4, 5, 7, 7, 7, 8, 8, 8, 10, 11, 12. And again, our mean was 7.5. I'm going to just draw an arrow to show that we're doing the same subtraction all the way down our list of data. And 3 minus 7.5, um, 4.5, negative 4.5, sorry, negative 3.5, negative 2.5, negative 0.5, negative 0.5, negative 0.5, again 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and we got 2.5, 3.5, 4.5, Taking the absolute value of all of these residuals, and adding them all together, we have 9, 16, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 24 divided by 12 gives us our MAD, our mean absolute deviation, of 2. So that means from our mean, which was 7.5 here, we went on average, 2 to the left and 2 to the right. On average, our spread 
was two away from the mean, whereas on the previous set of data, our average was a little less than one and a half away from the mean. And as we can see now that the MAD gives us a description of the data that our measures of central tendency did not. Our MAD is telling us how close the data is to the mean overall.